and welcome to a new episode of the Grizzly and Bear Rebuild in Cape Town, South Africa. Our defender was transported from Ponstein to Victitech, so we could get started on stage 2 of the operation. Victitech is the company in charge of building our future flatbed and storage boxes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Oh, that's so cool. Looking at the rear axles exposed like this with the chassis exposed, we can see how much further forward. We think we're going to be 400 millimeters further forward with the camper. So that weight distribution, so much better. And all of this is going to clash now with our uh, guide rails. The funnels that we had before to guide the camper on will clash with all the diesel heater. But that's fine. I can just move all this stuff up there. So the distance to attach the camper is will be way shorter and we won't have enough room to use the ratchet we won't be able to use the same ratchet straps definitely not our draw before was 190 mil oh that's big roughly yeah so yes. to make it nice and neat say the boxes line up with line the up. underside of yes. the rock sliders this is our airbag man air suspension system accumulated tank uh compressor and computer and we are thinking that it's going to fit perfectly in this space that I'm holding here with uh, which will be our uh, front right wheel arch box. We are discussing whether or not we install a tailgate. Thinking of positives, negatives, the moment we're leaning towards no tailgate. The negative is, uh, which Steffi had mentioned before, is when we're, we're driving around without the camper on, it'll just be an open back. When you take off the camper, um, you would really have, like to have the tailgate to, to just finish off the rear of the vehicle. We'll just do the both designs and look what it will look like on, on the design itself and then we'll take it from there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this valve and I'll put a straight 90 and then the valve can be, well I don't know how we're going to do that. Today's mission, I'm going to be hooking up the tail lights, then driving just around the corner to a Weybridge. We would love to end up at the end of all this, definitely no heavier than what we were. <laughs> That's the goal. If we can be a few kilos under, would be fantastic. All right, I have just come off the Weybridge. Steffi guessed 2,200 kilograms, I think. I guessed 2,000 kilograms. We have come in at 1,900 kilograms. It's less than what both of us thought. We got a little bit to play with now. This is very, very good news. I don't know how to use this thing. Uh, zero. All right, you've already cut it anyway, so. <laughs> Did you test it first? Or you just cut first, test later. Now my project is removing bits and pieces. Taking off anything that I can see that has slight corrosion or paint problems, the windscreen brackets, the rear view mirror arms, indicator uh, little protection thingies, and I'm also gonna do the headlight guards and our bonnet checker plate. I'm gonna put it all together and I'm gonna take it over to our mate Wayne at Landy Guru. So that's another Land Rover place. He's around the corner here, like literally. The only other time we've had this bonnet guard off was when we cleaned the vehicle for Australian customs. Steffi, where have you been actually? You got a little story to tell. Oh yeah, I've just been collecting my visa and it's not great because in one month I have to be out of the country. And you can't border hop. It doesn't work anymore. They're tightening down on the rules. 
that's it I think for now as far as the little bits and pieces that we're removing to get sandblasted and resprayed. We are here today at Landy Guru in Montague Gardens. We have a big project about to begin. We are going to be installing an LOF heavy duty clutch and a one piece output shaft into our Land Rover Defender. We purchased the product here in South Africa from Unreal Fendi. We've decided to change our clutch out because our clutch for many years now, although not failing on us, has been producing a terrible rattling noise. Uh, the output shaft, now that's a big one. We currently have an Ashcroft heavy duty output shaft, which has been fantastic, but the Ashcroft is still leaking a bit of oil. I know it's designed to do that, but I believe it's leaking a little bit more than it should be. I've had the transfer box out twice already. Then it leaked again, then they just cleaned it up and they covered it in the Sikaflex. Heavy that one, huh? All right, so gearbox now is removed, and now it's time to remove the clutch. The transfer box, it's out for the clutch replacement, but while it's out, I've just been discussing with Wayne about this little bad boy right here. It's a common occurrence for that thing to be always leaking. Mikey's opened her up and look at that. That's a beautiful thing. I love looking at gears. That's <laughs> so cool. Bang. So there we go. There's your drive. What do you reckon, Mikey? Looks in okay condition? Yeah, the gears are still fine. Perfect. What do we call this shaft that you're pulling out the here now? Through shaft. The through the shaft. Intermediate, so intermediate shaft. Intermediate, yes. Okay. Wow. Introducing Dan, who's the chief mechanic here. A lot of we, eh? So that little seal that we saw there, that O-ring, that's the one that's leaking the oil. And Wayne was explaining to me before the aluminium casing here, of course, aluminium and a steel shaft, it just wears away. This is a really common occurrence on these um, transfer boxes. And the eliminating that is a steel sleeve. If you can come closer with the camera, yeah. then you'll be able to see the ridge. The rubber wears the aluminium, the aluminium wears the steel. Oh, wow. But you can see how much the aluminium is actually eaten the, the steel shaft. Look at that, at that section. To do this machining job, the entire uh, transfer box had to be stripped down like this. In the entire transfer box, we have seven bearings and every single one of them is gonna be changed out during this rebuild. What is it again? It's an LT230 kit. LT230 kit. So there's all your... Oh, the gaskets. And then there's... Oh, there's a few bits and pieces go into this one. Today I'm gonna paint the underneath of the camper. I started to remove the edges of the camper and realized that most of the screws were rusting away. It's a good opportunity to replace them all. I've previously patched the holes where the side boxes were attached. I chose a good quality rubberized paint to prolong the life of the exposed plywood. As I started painting, of course, it starts to rain. I'm gonna have to stop my job. I know this is a bit stupid, but I really feel overwhelmed by this rain. It hasn't stopped for like and I can really see the camper is getting a lot of damage due to the rain. I feel like I can't make any progress. There's so many things on the go. I feel like we're doing half a job and then it has five more things to the list and we're not going anywhere. And then 
once we get it on all four blocks of wood. We're gonna have a rolling camper that we're gonna put inside away from the rain. Yeah. I'm very happy that our camper will be able to go under shelter. And it will make it easier to work. Hopefully it can dry as well. Ready, three, two, one. Oh, well. Well, that? This is the first. We've never done this before. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. Today, um, being my last day, we're going to run around. We're going to go to Landy Guru. We're going to go to Vic Tai Tech. We've got a final meeting with uh, Ian and the crew. Well, my final meeting. Steffi, of course, will be there for the next month managing the project. And then, yeah, tomorrow morning, I fly to Singapore. So. Time to go, try and achieve as much as we can in the last day. We've relocated the water drain in order to slide the camper in between the future side boxes. A wrapping expert came to have a look at what I wanted to be done and it said the wrapping is not the goal. Because of the texture of the camper, there are also too many features. Painting is such a big commitment, it takes time. And it's sort of permanent, so yeah, I'm very disappointed. Steffi's working away in there on the camper. She's a little bit upset. The wrapping guy, he just came, came around and he said it's not a good idea to try and wrap that camper. We weren't sort of ready to commit to a full paint job on the camper, so that's not my department. I'll let Steffi make the big decision on that. We had a clutch fix. Uh, Heavy duty clutch, yeah, and all in all good condition, um, but it was on its way out. Uh, we did notice a few of those springs were starting to come loose. So still very happy that we are gonna change it out. So that's the clutch we will be installing. It's very nice. The guys are out here in the machine shop and about to machine out our transfer box or the casing I should say to fit the sleeve and the sleeve will actually be getting made out of this lump of steel right here. The old shaft obviously is not going to be used. Ah, awesome, so we're going to get to see the new one here. The old one is worn out, it's um, already damaged, so we're gonna put a brand new, well the guys will be putting a brand new one in. What size is that, Ivan? 25. 35. 25 millimeter. What's the internal diameter we have to end up at here? We have to be at a 32. 32 millimeters. There we go, look at that. Literally micro, micro millimeters being shaved off each time here. What Ivan's doing now, he's gonna make the lip uh, for the bush. So that'll be this upper section here will be recessed in. You can see quite obviously there now what's going on. And to the micrometer. So will you press it in today, Ivan? Okay, that's all gonna happen. Wow, no mucking around. Awesome. There you go. Incredible. Brand new sleeved transfer box. Hopefully that's the end of that leak. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Dexter and Mikey, they've just removed our old output shaft. So here we have the new LOF one piece shaft that's gonna go in. And whilst we're in there, the, the kit actually comes with the seal as well, so that seal's gonna get changed out. I have to pack bags and get ready to fly to Singapore tomorrow. That's it, I'll see the car in a month. Today's mission, I'm gonna start repainting the inside cabin. the paint 
mixed at the local hardware store and the color is spot on. With the camper finally dry, I was about to resume my painting job. First coat and then the second coat the following day. A few days later, Bear returned from Landiguru with a new clutch and the rebuilt transfer box. We turned the camper 180 and we placed the Defender in the exact position so Andre and Ian could take some measurements, using a laser to level everything perfectly. Okay, I need to come down like 10 more. Another rip. Another two rips. Right. Okay, stop. Today the car will return to Pontstein to finish the work. Victor Tech has been taking all the measurements they needed. Now the car can go ahead and continue the work at Pontstein. All the measurements are taken. The car is just about ready to go back uh, to Pontstein. such a mess we've got a snorkel here light compressor some rear mirrors oh dear This full-on rebuild is a long process, but we are enjoying the journey, and we hope you do too. So we'll see you next time back at Pontstein for the magic final touches. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.